um, within a very short period of time. And uh, not only did he meet them, but now we have to go to a very interesting article, which I want to recommend to you. It's Got News, G-O-T-N-E-W-S, Got News, an article by Charles C. Johnson. This is from today, September 19th. Exclusive, overwhelming evidence that John McCain met with ISIS al rebels. Well, uh, again, most of this is what you see in the Voltaire Net article from one month earlier, but certainly tweets from Islamic terrorists and their supporters confirm that the terrorists John McCain met with partnered with ISIS. Don't believe this debunking. We'll go through the debunking in a minute. Senator McCain's spokesman, Brian Rogers, lies about the senator's ties to Syrian terrorists. McCain wanted a sleepover with the terrorists. Uh, and the source on that one is none other than Elizabeth Obagi. Elizabeth Obagi. You'll remember her. This was a year ago. Elizabeth Obagi was working at the Institute for the Study of War, the Kimberly Kagan monstrous think tank. Uh, Kimberly Kagan and General Jack Keane. Hey, we're seeing the same people again and again. Obagi worked for Kagan, and she was a colleague of General Keane, except that uh, about a year ago, Obagi was exposed for having lied about her academic record. She's a fake PhD. She alleged that she was a PhD, and this was false. She had no PhD. Serious. Now, as a speaking as a real PhD, I can tell you that this is dirty pool. So Obagi had to quit the Institute for the Study of War. Uh, Kimberly Kagan couldn't tolerate such a sleaze as Elizabeth Obagi. But then, don't worry, Obagi was hired by McCain. As far as I can determine with a quick search today, Obagi is a legislative aide to the senior senator from Arizona down to the present time. Obagi. And Obagi is the confirmation he wanted to stay over. And we're going to read you that when we come back here in just a minute on World Crisis Radio. World Crisis Radio. The watchword of the hour. Arrest McCain for ISIS. Hashtag arrest McCain for ISIS. The head of the Republican Party must be arrested, indicted, and jailed for material support for terrorism. And then we'll see what the November election looks like, and we'll get to see whether the U.S. aid to the so-called moderate terrorists or democratic terrorists or pro-Western terrorists will be continued. So... Elizabeth Obagi fired from the or forced to resign from the Institute for the Study of War by Kim Kagan now works for McCain. Let's go back then to this interesting got news. Charles C. Johnson. Here we have an interesting tweet. It's from Brian Rogers, communications director, office of Senator John McCain in the Capitol. And he's writing back to the interesting uh, journalist, Charles C. Johnson, saying, hey there, Charles, yes, he, McCain, wanted to visit with them, the terrorists, longer, including until the next day. And that's the sleepover. Then McCain's story then begins to uh, to waffle. He says uh, he didn't meet with terrorists, but he doesn't know who he met with. He declines to name them. Uh, and the cover story, you're going to hear this more and more, is McCain can't tell you who he met with. He, of course, supposedly knows, but he doesn't want to speak their names in public because then, oh my gosh, those wonderful Democratic guys would be targeted by the bad, mean terrorists of ISIS or maybe Al-Qaeda, Nusra, or any of the sort. So uh, Rogers tells CNN in May, right after the trip, none of the individuals the senator planned to meet with was named Mohammed Noor or Abu Ibrahim, <laughs> uh, sorry. Uh, we're also told here 
a character called Alexander Marquardt writes, McCain had small contingent of U.S. security as well as the Asafat al-Shamal Northern Storm Brigade, and he met with five FSA commanders and on and on. So take a look at this uh, article, highly interesting. Um, they attempt to conjure up um, some kind of a conflict. Is the Northern Storm Brigade an enemy? Well, according to Shami Witness, pub- published here in this same article, there were claims that ISIS had been clashing, hunting the Northern Storm Brigade of the FSA, but it turns out that they fought together side by side in Meng. Okay, so all kinds of interesting uh, details. Are we really supposed to know that? Are we supposed to believe that McCain wanted to have a sleepover with people he didn't know? They could have been terrorists. They could have taken him hostage. Okay, now, we have an amazing mobilization of frauds here um, to defend McCain. It's actually remarkable. Who do we have out there defending uh, McCain? Well, it's quite a group. It includes, and let's try to get the uh, the list because we want to give everybody their due. Uh, it includes CNN. It includes CBS. It includes uh, the Daily Beast, the Washington Post, Salon Magazine, the Daily Caller, uh, and on and on. They're all trying to debunk, as they say. In other words, to obscure the fact of fraternization by McCain with terrorists and material support by McCain to terrorists. Just parenthetically, now, we, we don't want to go through these cases because they're largely fake. But there are people in the United States now who are sitting in jail, indicted or waiting to be indicted, supposedly because they provided material support to uh, ISIS. And we've got a sting operation. We've got alleged ISIS in Australia wanting to cut people's heads off. Those guys are rounded up and taken into custody. McCain is still at large. He's still at large. Now, let's go through some of this. The Washington Post, I guess, leads the pack with their so-called fact-checking. Uh, the Wall Street, the Washington Post, four Pinocchios uh, for the claim that McCain met with the Islamic State. Now, c- the story gets complicated here because Rand Paul, the on-again, off-again uh, anti-war libertarian last week he was pro-war this week he's anti-war so we can't put our hand in the fire of course for little rand paul right he's flip-flopped on this issue as he flip-flopped on drones flip-flopped on the 1964 civil rights act this guy's like a he's like a, a weather vane tells you which way the wind is blowing in the in the reactionary republican party but still uh, remember, in the Leibnizian universe, evil off does good. When evil clashes with evil, good results. This is the thing that we're dealing with here. This is in no way uh, a, an endorsement of Rand Paul or even the suggestion that one can associate with Rand Paul. Quite the opposite. Don't bet anything on Rand Paul. He'll probably flip back as a result of the uh, panorama of press nonsense that I'm going to be uh, going through here. But the again, the Washington Post, four Pinocchios uh, for anybody who says, well, four Pinocchios, in this case for Rand. Uh, in an interview with the Daily Beast, Rand said, the Daily Beast, uh, September 16, 2014, here's the problem. Senator McCain did meet with ISIS and had his picture taken and didn't know what was happening at the time. Now, that's very charitable. He didn't know who he was meeting with. We would say he knows quite well who he's meeting with. Now, then the Washington Post purports to uh, give the facts. They go to Muaz Mustafa, the executive director of the Syrian Emergency Task Force. God knows who they are. Uh, The Northern Storm Brigade, according to Mustafa, is bitter enemies of the ISIS and, uh, well, other sort of uh, atmospherics and so forth. And we're even reminded that Douglas MacArthur McCain, the uh, Islamic State recruit from Minnesota had the same name as uh, as uh, McCain, as the senator, right? But 
uh, the pictures. And, and then we're told about vote vets and that they're also wrong. Uh, Senator uh, McCain, well, the, the, the chairman of vote vets, John Saltz, has given up. He told the fact checker that he did not pose with ISIS, but he did meet with the FSA. And some of them then went on to become parts of the ISIS. I'm afraid that's not even it. He met with somebody from Al Qaeda who had a price on his head, who was at the same time the head of ISIS, who then went on and uh, became the uh, the caliph. Now, the other one, the other interesting one is uh, McCain has these Freudian slips. He's done it twice. On the Sean Hannity show, September 15th, uh, Hannity tells him, tells McCain, hey, Rand Paul is criticizing you, says the FSA does not exist. And McCain says, has Rand Paul ever been to Syria? Has he ever met with ISIS? Has he ever met with any of these people? Has he ever met with ISIS? Well, the obvious implication is McCain has met with ISIS. It's the second time. We have another broadcast with McCain where he says, Hillary, Panetta, Petraeus, everybody wanted to help ISIS and Obama blocked it. So twice, not once, but twice, he has raved about uh, ISIS as if he were in, uh, or basically reflecting that he is in close touch with uh, ISIS. Uh, we've also just had these exchanges with uh, Kerry at the Senate Foreign Relations Committee this past week, where um, McCain raves. He says, I'm in touch with them all the time. I'm in contact with those FSA people all the time. I know too many of them, John. I know them intimately. Oh, my God. He knows them intimately. We need a special prosecutor. Back in a minute on World Crisis Radio. Okay, it's hashtag indict McCain for ISIS. I'm sorry. Arrest, arrest McCain for ISIS. Make it clear. I get down down to earth. Arrest McCain for ISIS. So we've got Obagi. That leads to Kagan's. That leads to Keane. He's directly implicated. Petraeus and Keane were called in by Kerry and Samantha to find a way to wage war in Syria, and now they found it. The training has been voted for, and the airstrikes is what various people are pressing for, and we've got to stop it. I urge you to mobilize with us on this. This will be the principal issue of the November elections. This is it. And um, remember, they've been, they were able to grind down Dempsey, and to some extent, Hegel, Dempsey flipped this week. And Kerry also points to another character they brought in, General Allen. Remember him. Now, remember, because this all goes back to the attempted putsch by Petraeus under the color of the November 2012 election. Benghazi was the centerpiece of it. And Petraeus was then forced out under the color of a sex scandal with Broadwell. But this was a putsch. And forced out with him, also under the cover of a quasi-sex scandal, was General Allen, who was hobnobbing with Jill Kelly, the rival of Broadwell, two Matahari operatives, it looks like. So Allen, though, was supposed to take over as NATO commander. He was forced out. He said his wife was sick, but he was forced out. And Allen is now back as the principal advisor to Kerry. If you listen to those hearings, Kerry kept saying, my guide, my man, my guru is General Allen. So another warmonger has been brought in. Look at this uh, pattern. Okay, so Washington Post claims that they know who McCain met with for Pinocchios for Rand. Jake Tapper on CNN. Defend McCain against false charges. From Rand Paul. Well, again, sorry, no endorsement of Rand Paul, but the charges are true. CBS claims that the charges against McCain have already been debunked. Yeah, they've been debunked, as for Tapper, by the Free Syrian Army itself. 
Tapper comes on and says, yeah, we called the Free Syrian Army and we said to them, are there any Al Qaeda or ISIS terrorists in that picture? And Free Syrian Army told us, not a one. Those are